first, a few things we need to talk about. You've been in the press recently, Jonathan, and I said online, I think you're a hero and a champion of show business. You were shafted by some scumbag that decided not to pay you. I'm currently owed thousands of pounds by people. It seems like it's okay now for talent to be paid less and last. It's it's unfair. It's it, You're always at the bottom of the pile, and, uh, and if a producer hasn't got it left, he just goes, oh, it's fine. And, and that's not right. And, it, and it's so difficult. This industry is so overpopulated. People struggle to get auditions, let alone get the role. They then negotiate their terms and then they go on the road and they give their talent, their amazing like hours and hours of training and then their time away from loved ones and uh, friends and family doing a show. And although we absolutely love what we do, it really is um, not just about the love of it. You still have to pay your bills at the end of the month. And it's so, so unfair that it puts people in incredible financial hardship when a producer just revokes the fee at the end and goes sorry I'm gonna bust the company and it's uh, it's just a, a travesty that in particular Stephen Leatherland that I stood up to recently in his uh, current company world on stage he's got a uh, an unfortunate knack of folding companies when anyone comes to him for the money and over the last 20 years he's done that 10 times and he's now gonna be starting the 11th company because I'm chasing him for it and that's not right and it's not right with Stephen and the other people in those productions but it's ultimately not right across the board and um, we're even looking now in connection with uh, equity to try and get a lobbyist uh, firm together and actually change legislation so that there's some kind of um, slush fund insurance policy that in the industry there's producers paying into an insurance the artist portion of their fee is paid in so if a producer pulls the show there's still some money you get paid a few days work and I think that's vital people work so so hard they don't get paid anywhere near what you'd expect and they need that money at the end of the month and it's just not right the big question is how somebody gets, you know, like he's been Stephen Leatherland for how, however long he's been, how he's got to be at the forefront of 10 different businesses. Well, I'll tell you how, because most people aren't be, brave enough to stand up and say But should he not it. be blacklisted from, like, running a company like but that? But here's how the other he side. Some people one? will say you'll be blacklisted because you're a troublemaker because you speak out, and, and I've seen this in my career. Did you ever worry about that? Absolutely, and I certainly am conscious of that. And the reality is I'm in a very, very fortunate position. G4 is going really well. I've got other... Um, other amazing opportunities in my career. I'm not going in front of casting agents and, and giving my soul to hopefully get a role and uh, and slog away for eight shows a week on a production touring around or in the West End. I'm in control of my own destiny with G4 and as a solo artist. And that does give me that ability and that power. And it's, it's a very, very fortunate position to be in. And I'm utilizing that position, not just for myself, but for everybody that's in that. And the ludicrous defense, I've paid your expenses, couldn't yeah. be more insulting, could it? But producers literally, um, they prey on the um, vulnerability and the insecurity of artists as well because they because an artist will worry that if then get they get a reputation as a troublemaker that they'll be you know kind of other people a word will get around and you know auditioning is a waste of time because they they won't be considered for things and producers prey upon that vulnerability and i think that's really 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 evil and whether you're on 10 grand or 10p it doesn't matter if your own money and you've done the job you should be paid and somebody somewhere is making money and what i love now is that the reaction to the, the protest, it's become called a protest, uh, stage protest on Facebook that I did, has not just had hundreds of thousands of views, but it's also had a reaction across the industry and across industries. I have to say, a lot of self employed individuals have come against the same thing. And there's a lot of companies and particular industries in the country which do this on a regular basis and leave people not just out of pocket, but they break homes. There's one lady contacted me and said that it literally ruined her life. She lost her dad. He went into an emotional breakdown because he lost six months of work against a contract he then lost the house he split up with his wife he became so depressed she lost her dad because somebody didn't have the the chutzpah to pay and actually stand up to their obligations and they they embezzled that money reopened and added a little dot uk or something on the company still trading as the old one and that's not right i think it's amazing that uh, the reaction to me has not just been uh, from also performers but also producers and that reaction has been overwhelming for me and i'm, I'm delighted to have stood up on behalf of everybody. And what amazes me is the arrogance of these people that they'll stand there as if they've done nothing wrong. We'll leave it there, but it is remarkable. It is, and it's a, it's a sad world, but please, anyone out there, don't work for Stephen Leatherland. Congratulations on being so brave to do it. I admire you greatly. So, back to this album then. It's the love album. It uh, entails all these wonderful tunes from Elton John to Amigos Para Siempre, I'll Do Anything But That, and all these other songs. <laughs> um, how long did it take you in the studio? Because beautiful arrangements. 
Goodness me, I'm just trying to think. I think we were in the studio a week or two, weren't we, doing vocals. And we went out to Prague to record the orchestra as well, which was pretty amazing. So it's sort of over a collection of a few weeks, I think, it really came together. Pardon me, by the way, that's me in the background. Oh, was that one of your, <laughs> let's call it, movements? No, it you was see, a, if you eat cookies, motorbike. that will happen. It'll, it'll, it'll do that. <laughs> and then we're looking forward to the tour. I mean, I just saw you again at Christmas in that cathedral in Derby, which is probably one of the most glorious settings you can ever see any singers that can actually do the business. And with virtually no PA, there you were just singing these glorious harmonies. Is it still as magical for you today as it was uh, when you started? Because let's face it, you've been doing it a long time and having to churn out these songs so perfectly night after night. I think that's the thing is to continually find that hunger and that energy and that drive to carry on and make something special. You have to remember that in an audience, there's always going to be somebody for whom that's the first time that they've experienced listening to us and very often the first time that they've experienced listening to music live. And we have to remember how special it is for them. And if that one per- for that one person, um, that's so, so important. But for you know that contrasts that with the people who come to see us every single night, every sh- single show, and the commitment that that is, you know, it's an amazing thing. All of those things together, if you can't be driven to do something, you know, on, on a night like that you know whether it's your 17th show in a row and you're really really tired if when you cross you cross the stage and you're there in front of people you can't lose that tiredness for an hour and a half something's really really wrong I don't think there's ever been a group with better tighter harmonies than you have and I congratulate you on that Nick that feeling of being on stage when it all comes together must be magnificent yeah it really is and we're we're really fortunate in this group that we have those extremes of ranges those sort of vocal freaks that with John right up the top and me Underneath you don't need the word vocal in there. <laughs> no, but it's uh, it's polite. It's a separate term. Freeze. You guys Come get on. up to in oh. your own time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't do that. <laughs> it is That's really, the it is really three, and there's some sort of uh, some sort of all these sort of unconscious connections that we make with e- uh, with each other when we're singing in harmony, like s- syncing up in time with the lyrics and, and everything like that. And that cu- the power of that comes over to the audience, and they so that, you know they don't even know it, but that's what's really you like syncing unconsciously as well, don't you? Mm, Why do are you I? looking so confused this evening? Am I baffling? I'm, you? It's just been a long day. I'm just trying to work out what that means. We're speaking too quickly. Would you like yeah. me to slow? Sorry, down? what? <laughs> he's the older one of the group, and he's. Just so he's hearing aid up. Set it, set it to end. Set it to end. <laughs> <laughs> he got the loop system. Yeah, I am the granddad of the group, sadly. So I was talking to you earlier, and you, you said something that I thought was remarkable. In all the years, we've never talked about this, because Il Divo have always sort of been the elephant in the room, that they're doing what they do, which is quite similar to you. I honestly think on stage you have better energy, you have a better spirit, you also have more fun, you make it more contemporary. I think they get bored. You, though, could have been in Il Divo. It almost happened. It almost happened. It was a bizarre moment. I went to college one day and there was a little uh, poster up on the wall saying that uh, Psycho, uh, it was quite a new company at the time, uh, was looking for an operatic version of Westlife and if you were up for auditioning come to an open audition on X day and turn up. Uh, I messed up with my diary and thought it was the day after, just realised, rushed to the room and there were chairs as far as you could see all lined up and I ushered myself past them, rushed into the uh, uh, room and thankfully the uh, panel and the pianist was still there. Simon Cowell was sat at the back, totally unexpected. He was there with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and uh, I sung and I did bring him home actually and from Lemmy's, I sung that and he just went, hmm, how old are you? I literally just said how old I was and uh, he said okay thank you and I left and I thought that was the weirdest experience didn't expect him to be there and then uh, they were at the time as I say looking for a Westlife looking group they then called me back and said they're still interested maybe talk a bit more and then they went no we've changed we're going for an Hispanic look and that became uh, subsequently Il Devo this huge brand that actually was then advertised for the very first time in the UK in the ad breaks after our performances on the X Factor so it was kind of a weird moment where (laughs) we were confused actually for a little if you like G4 you might like these Yes. Was pretty much <laughs> that sounds very Simon Cowell, doesn't it? And they've, it? they've done incredible... Like, look, they're a totally different concept. They're incredible. And their production values are, are insane. They've got a huge, huge financial backing. Uh, God forbid they'd look at each other on stage, though. They're not mates. They're fabulous singers. They're internationally renowned individual artists. And David's voice in particular, I adore. Carlos's power when he kicks in, amazing. And as a group, they are so powerful. But they're not a group in the same way that we are. And having 
having the fun as you say the interaction and and that enjoyment that we get they absolutely flirt with the audience and they have that connection but they don't seem to have that natural bond and I, I do think they're incredible I've seen them a few times and I think they're a wonderful wonderful product uh, but I think that we've got something more real I think that's what people have connected to in particular in the UK you meant better not real no real we're real look I don't think we're we're better or worse I think that they have got huge investment behind I think if Simon Cow got behind us maybe and put all of those amazing grand things maybe there could be obviously a more expansive production and stuff behind us we're quite uh, I, I guess bijou in the way that we create what we do but it connects and we spend the time with the audience we stand at the end of a show and we sign everybody's autographs that are in the queue and we have that connection we don't rush off and disappear and, and then jet home to our own individual country uh, I mean now we live in different parts of the UK individually but we're together a lot and I think that that's really important as the bond you can't buy chemistry and you can't buy talent and you've got both congratulations boys the new album is available now put G4 into Amazon it'll come up right at the top and the tour uh, kicks off later in the spring what date? 1st of March in Cheltenham it's going to be great and then you're back again in the autumn which is remarkable and then Christmas I'll see you in Nottingham thank you for booking that in I can't afford any more petrol going to Derby because it's another <laughs> it's another 14-15 minute drive do you know what I mean Mike I appreciate that it's a long way yeah can it's I still fun. have free tickets maybe I'm owed a lot of money from an agent so. <laughs> if you come to Derby you can have a free ticket <laughs> well, it's, thank you so much great to talk to you the new album's out now I shall see you in March thank you Perfect. thank, thank you. you cheers thank you.